janmad yasya yato divyad itaratas charte swavigyaswarat Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Muyantiat Surayaha Tejo Varimadam Yatavini Mayo Yatra Chisargo Mesha Tejo Varimadam Yatavini Mayo Yatra Chisargo Mesha Dam Nasrin Sada Satyam Param Di Mahi O my Lord, Sri Krishna's son of Vasudeva, O all-pervading personality Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primeval cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations, of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reaction of the, of the three modes of nature, appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaitravutra paramo nirmatsaranam sutam vedyam vastavam atravastu shivadam tapa trayon mulanam Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kim Vapurair Ishwarha Sadyo Ridi Aburudyate Tra Krite Bihi Susubis Takshanad Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truths which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam Muhur Ahoraska Bhuvi Bhavakaha O expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature further the desire to read Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarine juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls, Shinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hiryantak Stohi Badrani 
Vidunati Suhitsatam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures, or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita, is itself righteous activity. <laughs> and for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling within everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engaged in hearing of him. Nastapresu Bhadresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naistiki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. as he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees. He remains, uh, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance, and thus material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso bhagavat bhakti yogitaha bhagavat tattva vigyanam muktasangasya jayate when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis chidyante sarvasamsaya siyante chasyakarmani Thus, Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of samsayam samagram, understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee in Krishna consciousness, can one understand the science of Krishna? Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 17, verse number 37. Tanmi Dharma Pritam Shrestha Stanam yidestum arhasi Yatraiva niyato vatsya Atistam ste nusasanam Translation by Srila Prabhupada. Therefore, O chief amongst the protectors of religion, please fix some place for me where I can live permanently under the protection of your government, purported by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. The personality of Kali addressed Maharaja Parikshit as the chief amongst the protectors of religiosity because the king refrained from killing a person who surrendered unto him. A surrendered soul should be given all protection, even though he may be an enemy. That is the principle of religion. And we can just imagine what sort of protection is given by the person of Godhead to the person who surrenders unto him, not as an enemy, but as a devoted servitor. The Lord protects the surrendered soul from all sins and all resultant reactions of sinful acts. Srila Prabhupada Kije. 
So this is a very significant points being made here. So the personality of Kali surrendered to Maharaj Brikshit, as we know. And therefore Maharaj Brikshit refrained from killing him, although he was ready to kill him. But you can't, according to the Vedic tradition, you can't kill a person who surrenders. And they have the same rule in the Geneva Convention of the Rules of War. You're not allowed to kill someone who surrenders, puts down their arms and say, I give up. However, he surrendered because he was defeated by Maharaj Briggs. He didn't surrender because he wanted to render devotional service. He didn't change his desire to corrupt the people in the age of Kali. So he was restricted to certain places where there's gambling, meat eating, intoxication, and illicit sex. Basically, in a casino. <laughs> so if you go to a casino, you are going to see the manifestation of Kali's spirit, where all those four regulative principles are broken. So, but wait a minute. What if you surrender to the Lord and want to engage in devotional service, what happens then? Now that's a different case. Right? Well, it says, the Lord protects the surrendered soul from all sins and all resultant reactions of sinful acts. Sarvadharma pretty good. Mami comes to the number. Ham tvam sarva papi pyo moksi sami ma So what, what is the symptom of someone who was surrendering not because they're defeated and like Kali and who hasn't give up, given up his purpose is to corrupt the people of Kali Yuga. <clears throat> well, if you surrender to the Lord, the symptom of a person who's actually surrendered is man mana bhava mad bhakto mad yajimam namaskuru mam ivaisusi satyam te pratijane priyosime. Such a person is very dear to the Lord because he's always thinking of the Lord, manmana bhava, mad bhakto, he's actually become the servant of the Lord, the devotee of the Lord, and, and engaged in bhakti yoga. Madhyaji, he worships the Lord, and mam namaskaru, he gives all his respect and homage to the Lord. That means when the Lord says something, he listens and follows. So there are symptoms of someone who's actually surrendered. So Kali did not have those symptoms. But if somebody surrenders like that, then they're free from all sinful reactions, all pop, papas, pops, and uh, the and the desire to sin is also gradually eradicated in the heart of the devotee. That's more important than simply going to confession. Uh, oh, Holy Father, I have sinned. Oh, what sins did you perform? I did this, and I did that. Well, you'll have to chant 1,000 Hail Marys. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. Now, that's confession. But, and, and there's different forms of confession in different churches. And uh, usually after confession, they get communion. They, they get a little piece of bread that's dipped in wine and it represents the flesh and the blood of Jesus. And that's, that's the Christian form of prashad. They have prashad also. Of course, they dip it in wine so that <laughs> you wouldn't be able to offer that prashad to Krishna. But anyway, that's their way of doing it. By the way, originally, they didn't, uh, when Jesus did the Last Supper, they had grape juice. They didn't have wine. No. But that's another issue. Okay, so uh, Krishna protects the surrendered soul from all sins and all resultant reactions of sinful acts. So today I wanted to talk about something special. It uh, might be considered by some highly controver controversial, but I want, to, I want you to understand how Prabhupada established this movement and how he was a great commander-in-chief, a great leader, but his 
actions were a little bit different than Morris Brixen. But he got the same uh, result. That is, he was able to spread this movement all over the world. And Maharaj Pariksit, he was able to counter Kali's action by having massive sankirtan, prasadam distribution of festivals. So <coughs> everyone was diverted from the casinos and the places where Kali would hang out. So that'll be the sign of our success. When nobody goes to a casino or to Disneyland or any place like that where they can completely forget Krishna and think they are happy. That's what those places are, the places where you can totally forget Krishna. So in 1970, this is like four years after Prabhupada started the movement. Well, there are several times where some devotees revolted against Prabhupada and went against him. So this is like this second major revolt. So in 1970, at, and I remember this because although I was just a new devotee at that time and I was made a temple president in Paris, although I didn't really know what I was doing other than going on a sankirtan every day. And uh, at that time, my mentor was, was, Bhakti, was uh, Tamal Krishna Goswami, who I only knew for about one month. And... I met him first in London when I joined the temple, and then I, I left, I came back to Paris. Then he came to s start the preaching in Paris, and he called me, and because I respected him, uh, I went to see him, and he asked me to help him start the Sankirtan. Uh, so I was there for the first Sankirtan. In fact, there's a picture of it. There's a photograph of it. Anyway, uh, he... Uh, uh, he inspired me to, to do Sankirtan, and I liked chanting and dancing, so uh, I did it. And then all of a sudden, he had to leave. This is after we got our first little apartment. That's a whole story. I'm not going to go through all that. And he's leaving. And I said, you can't leave. <laughs> we just started. I don't know what I'm doing. He said, no, no, you're president. You stay here. You just keep doing what I taught you to do, Sankirtan. And he left. I said, well, why are you leaving? He said, I can't tell you. It's too heavy. I said, okay. So he left. So it took me years to find out what actually happened. It was, I can't say it was kept a secret, but it was in many ways kept a secret. But the record of what happened is right in, is in Prabhupada's letters. So I'm going to read some of these letters, and you're going to see what problems Prabhupada ha had to face to establish this movement. And besides everything else, uh, two heart attacks coming on the uh, Jaladuta to the United States, ending up in the United States with no friends, no money, and all that, you know, almost being killed by some crazy hippie who tried to stab him to death, all that stuff. But this is even worse. And it's good to hear it because then you see the Prabhupada is the commander in chief. He is a Mahabhagavat devotee who's acting on the level of a Madhyama Adhikari, but actually, in his heart, he's a Madhyama, he's a uh, Uttama Adhikari, who has no rancor, has no hatred, has no envy, and he's just full of mercy. So he, had, he has to balance that because he can't just whitewash somebody's sins, right? He has to correct them. At the same time, he has to protect the movement and the devotees. So it's a, it's a, it's a tight rope. It's walking on a tight rope. Yeah. So in a letter in July 27, 1970, uh, this is when the first hints of what was going on came out. And Prabhupada says, At the present moment in our ISKCON campus, Politics and diplomacy has entered. Some of my beloved students, on whom I counted very, very much, have been involved in this matter, influenced by Maya. As such, there has been some activity which I consider as disrespectful. So I have decided to retire and divert attention to book writing and nothing more. So... 
So that's in a letter in uh, July 27th. And then he talks about the ISKCON press was specifically established exclusively for printing my books. Please therefore give me an idea how you can help me in getting all my manuscripts printed as soon as possible. Okay, so uh, he says, uh, uh, whenever so-and-so is submitting an estimate for printing my books, I am supplying the money immediately. So far, the finance is concerned. Krishna is supplying. Therefore, if you simply print my books in the press incessantly, that will give me great delight. So please, therefore, let me know how far you can all help me in this connection and what are the manuscripts ready for printing. I think I shall now stop all other activities except publishing of my books Kindly enlighten me per return mail. <clears throat> so this was a letter he wrote in 27th July 1970. So he's saying something pretty shocking. He says, <clears throat> so I have decided to retire and divert attention to book writing and nothing more. In other words, and, and, he's, and he's, he's blaming it, or he's, he's saying the reason for that is because some of his most closest, uh, let's say, followers have become disrespectful. Then <clears throat> on July 31st, so this letter, first letter was July 27th, July 31st, he writes a letter to one, uh, to two of those persons who disrespected him. And he says, in order to set an example to my other sannyasi students, I am personally going to Japan with a party of three other sannyasi students Although it is beyond my physical condition, and don't forget Prabhupada's health was not good at that time, still am going because after he came to the United States in 1968, he had a heart attack. And he had to go to the hospital, and then he went to India to recuperate, and then he came back, but, so, but his health was very uncertain. So he said, I'm personally going to Japan with a party of three other sannyasi students. Although it is beyond my physical condition, still am going out so that you may learn the responsibility of sannyasa. So he's telling this to two other people. There were four principal persons who uh, uh, disrespected him seriously. And what did he do? He didn't say, get out. No, he gave them sannyas. <laughs> and he gave sannyas to a, a bunch of young men. And they were only in their 20s. He gave them sannyas. He said, now you go out and preach. No more managing for you. Only the grihastas are going to manage the temples. You guys go out and preach. And in order to show them what that means, he gave the example himself. He said, I'm not going to manage anymore. And at the same time, he started the GBC, the governing body uh, of, of ISKCON, with other uh, devotees who were not disrespectful to him. And he's, he turned over the management to them. Uh, so now he's writing to those two. And he says, uh, and he informs them that he's going to start the GBC. And he says, so I am fervently appealing to you all not to create fracture in the solid body of the society. Please work conjointly without any personal ambition, that will help the cause. It is the injunction of the Vedas that the spiritual master should not be treated as ordinary man, even if sometimes the spiritual master behaves like ordinary man. It is the duty of the disciple to accept him as superhuman man. In the beginning of your letter, your comparison of the soldier and commander is very appropriate. We are on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. One side, Maya, the other side, Krishna. So the regulative principles of a battlefield, namely to abide, so the regulative principles of a battlefield, namely to abide by the order of the commander must be followed. Otherwise it is impossible to direct the fighting capacity of the soldiers and thus defeat the opposing elements. Kindly therefore take courage. You are capable in so many ways let things be rightly done so that our mission may be correctly pushed forward to come out victorious. So basically he's telling them, look, don't do what you're doing anymore. Just stop that. And okay, you don't have to 
uh, he's not he's not implying uh, to engage. He's just saying just stop doing what you're doing, and don't try and fracture the movement. Okay. So that's July 31st. Then, on August 16th, he writes to another uh, person who we put on the GBC, and this is not one of the four that revolted. Um, he says, I'm getting older day by day. So if I can see in my lifetime that all of you have opened at least 108 branches of ISKCON institution, that would be a great pleasure for me. So now the factual administration will depend on the governing body, commission, and the sannyasis are entrusted for making propaganda work. I wish to remain on the background to give you some directions. So kindly execute the missionary activities very carefully with enthusiasm, patience, conviction, follow the regulative principles, chanting regularly 16 rounds, dealing without any duplicity, and above all, keeping oneself in the society of pure devotees. Our different centers are meant for organizing a group of pure devotees so that neophyte visitors may take examples from them and thus become attached to Krishna consciousness. This formula is active everywhere, and I see practically here in Japan where they do not understand the language, but still they are taking part like other, cents, like other centers. So... He wrote that on August 16th. Then on August 23rd, he's writing to one of the members who revolted against him. And he says, I'm very glad to note that you are now realizing that without executing the regular routine work of spiritual life, he means chanting 16 minimum, 16 good rounds a day, and following the regulative principles and taking part in the Mongol RT and all these things, right? Going out on Sankirtan, eating only prasadam, etc. He says, without executing regular routine work of spiritual life, nobody can grow spiritual strength, and without spiritual strength, no one can preach the Krishna consciousness movement. Both of you are my great hopes. You have done great service to the cause of the society, and I always consider you as the two strongest pillars of the society. Then he mentions the name of one, and he says, He joined me in my apartment in New York sometimes in 1966, and since then he is working so hard for upliftment. So your service to Krishna in this connection will never go in vain, even though accidentally something contrary has been done. So far, I am concerned. I am the same spiritual father and guide of both of you, and I have prayed all along to Krishna for bringing you back to your good conscience. I hope Krishna is already helping you sitting in your heart and thus you are executing the regulative principles. We have a great task before us to preach this Krishna consciousness, consciousness all over the world. I have given you all the sannyasa, I have given you all the sannyasa order with a great hope that in future you will work for me. I came to your country to execute the mission of my spiritual master at a very old age. And by the grace of my spiritual master, within four or five years, with your cooperation, we have expanded beyond expectation. Now, if all of you sannyasis work with the same zeal and enthusiasm, and if each of you establish another set of 30 or 40 branches, with necessary influx of devotees, then I am sure our Krishna consciousness movement will prove a solid fact throughout the whole world. And for this person, purpose, you have to gather sufficiently spiritual strength. There is a statement in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that without being empowered by Krishna, nobody can preach the glories of his holy name. And the only means for acquiring the spiritual strength is to abide by the orders of the spiritual master. That is the verdict of all scriptures. So, he says that, and then, hmm. then he writes another letter, wait a minute, let's see here, uh, let's see.
So then he writes three letters um, on uh, September 2nd and 3rd. And he writes one to a person who's not revolted against him. He says, regarding the poisonous effect in our society, it is a fact, and I know where from this poison tree, I know from, I know where this poison tree has sprung up and how it affected practically the whole society in a very dangerous form. But it does not matter. Prahlad Maharaj was administered poison, but it did not act. Similarly, Lord Krishna and the Pandavas were administered poison, and it did not act. I think in the same parampara system that the poison administered to our society will not act if some of our students are as good as Prahlad Maharaj. I have therefore given the administrative power to the governing body commission. I have tried to give you all Krishna consciousness. Now it is your duty to develop it. If you remain strong on the spiritual platform, then your progress will not be checked or blocked. I do not know what was resolved in New Vrindavan, although uh, Shiman so-and-so has informed me, others has informed others that he has sent a tape in this connection. I am still in darkness about the proceedings in New Vrindavan, but I have heard that so-and-so is preaching about me, that I am Krishna, that I am super soul, that I have withdrawn my mercy from the disciples, and that I have left the society, and so on. I do not know how far they, these things are correct, but I have written him a letter that he may not do something which may harm the interest of the society. You are also one of the members of the GBC, so you can think over very deeply how to save the situation. It is a fact, however, that the great sinister movement, that it is a fact, however, that the great sinister movement is within our society. I have not heard anything from so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so. so all of you may try to save the society from this dangerous position. Okay. And then he writes another letter. Um, that was September 2nd. And then he writes on September 13th to another member, new member of the GBC. He says, uh, I am so glad to learn that you are having nice success in placing my books in the libraries and in schools and colleges. That is very much to my satisfaction. So please continue your program for placing these Krishna consciousness literatures in all the libraries and schools and colleges. I am sure that this will revolutionize the thinking of the thoughtful men of your country, as well as the students and professors and the ultimate end will be to save the world from the clutches of material illusory activities, which is now causing havoc everywhere. It is a great encouragement to me also that the GBC is carefully revising the program of our temples in view of the recent attacks upon our society. I am very much counting upon all upon you all to keep the standard of Krishna consciousness as I have already instructed you both orally and in my literatures. <clears throat> Regarding the four sannyasis, I have already written to them in care of the Detroit temple, requesting them not to preach anything which may hamper the growth of our society. But I have not received any reply from them. Please try to help these boys and advise them on my behalf not to waste time in such fruitless endeavor. I hope in the meantime I shall receive your reply by the grace of Krishna. Yes, I am so glad that your center is doing so well and all the devotees are now appreciating the presence of their spiritual master by following his instructions, although he is no longer physically present. This is the right spirit. So another thing Prabhupada did was uh, he established the GBC and he also established the BBT Press and he empowered the GBC men to manage, but he, he did reserve the right to advise them. See. And um, and now he's teaching the devotees what it means to have a spiritual master. What is a spiritual master? So obviously, 
they did not understand. Therefore, some of them revolted, thinking they could take over the movement and kick out Srila Prabhupada. Then, on the 13th, he writes another letter to another new member of the GBC. And he says, in India, our preaching work is going on practically every day. Practically every day we have got an outside nice meeting. There is regular newspaper coverage, but the difficulty is that the whole country is now communist infected. Just like America is now communist infected. Not as bad maybe as India at that time. People are in very much perturbed condition. All of them are expecting me to do something for ameliorating or improving the situation. But I am simply advising them to chant Hare Krishna because this transcendental sound is the only panacea or only cure for all material diseases. I am receiving many astounding letters regarding the new propaganda work by our four sannyasis. I do not know why these boys are doing such nonsense and wasting their time. I received a letter from Detroit about a week ago, and I have replied to them duly, intimating or, or, or explaining therein that instead of wasting time in that way, let them work constructively. Please advise them on my behalf not to waste time in such fruitless endeavor. I hope I shall receive their reply by the grace of Krishna in the meantime. Now I have invested the GBC for maintaining the standard of our Krishna Consciousness Society. So keep the GBC very vigilant. I have already given you full directions in my books. Please counteract this contamination which has been spread throughout our society. Okay, so then he writes another letter to another devotee who's not a mem member of the GBC, but he's, he's a... a somewhat of a trusted devotee. Uh, he says, I'm very glad to know that the GBC is actively working to rectify the subversive situation which has been weakening the very foundation of our society. All of you members of the GBC, please always remain very vigilant in this connection so that our society's growth may go on unimpeded by such poisonous elements. Your preaching in New Vrindavan, as well as intensified study of our literatures with seriousness is very much encouraging. Please continue this program with vigor and reestablish the solidity of our movement. From the very beginning, I was strongly against the impersonalists, and all my books are stressed on this point. So my oral instruction as well as my books are all at your service. Now you GBC consult them and get clear and strong idea then there will be no disturbance. Disturbance is caused by ignorance. Where there's no ignorance, there is no disturbance. The four sannyasis may bark, but still the caravan will pass. There is every evidence that they, have, they are influenced by some of my fourth class god brothers. Regarding India, first of all, I'm trying to fix up a center in Calcutta, and then I shall call you as your presence is needed. In the meantime, go on constructing New Vrindavan. If there is opportunity, try to convince these rascal sannyasis who are misled by fourth-class men that if they at all want to have a change of leadership, why do they not select a better leader than at present moment? What is the use of finding out a fourth-class leader who has no asset as their background? But basically what he's saying is there was principally one of his godbrothers who influenced these four boys, and then they spread these rumors all over the movement, and they were thinking of making that god brother of Prabhupada the leader of ISKCON. <laughs> you see how vicious it was. That god brother never did anything like Srila Prabhupada, spreading the movement all over the world. And then he says, I am simply sorry that such intelligent boys are misusing their brain substance in this way. Try to rectify them as far as possible. So-and-so has inquired from so-and-so regarding this fourth-class godbrother of mine. I do not know what is the sequence of this inquiry, but it is clear that there is a great clique, and the so-called sannyasis are the via media of spreading contamination in our society 
is a very sorry plight. Okay, so that was September 13th. And now, September 19th, he's writing to one, a new member of the GBC. He says, I am, no, I am pleased to know that you have fully distributed your money to my book fund and BBT and, Bhag and BTG. And as you are experiencing, Krishna will send you more. We should know it well that Krishna is no poor man. And he can give us any amount at any time. Simply he is waiting to see that we will use it according to his desire. So the more we spend in his service, the more he will provide, rest assured. Okay, that's a nice instruction. And then he writes to a, a married couple. And he says, Lately, there has been some misunderstanding amongst our devotees about our Krishna consciousness philosophy. Particularly, there has been some confusion about the relationship between the spiritual master and Krishna. The Vedas say that there is a master, Krishna. His servant, this servant, Krishna, is the spiritual master. And this is the conclusion. The spiritual master is the mercy representative of the Supreme Lord. And as such, he is given honor as good as Krishna. But he is never identical with Krishna. Perhaps you know the picture of Madhavacharya, one of the great acharyas in our line, who is holding two fingers up to indicate Krishna and Jiva. The impersonalists hold up one finger because their idea is that everything is one. So if we make the spiritual master identical with Krishna, then he will also become impersonalist. Then we will also become impersonalist. If we say that our spiritual master is Krishna, then the conclusion is that if we become spiritual masters someday, then we will also become Krishna. Please try to understand how dangerous this kind of reasoning is. Prabhupada nailed it. Right. In my books, I have tried to explain clearly this simultaneous one and different philosophy, achintya beda beda tattva, propounded by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But sometimes it happens that this philosophy is given a self-interested interpretation. As soon as personal motivation comes in it, as, pers as soon as personal motivation comes in, it is not possible for one to understand our Krishna consciousness philosophy. Very important point. As soon as personal ambition or personal motivation enters the mind of someone, it's not possible to understand Krishna consciousness philosophy. You have both been very nice devotees, and I would like you both to continue to make nice advancements. So please patch up any crack that may have come between yourself and ISKCON. So this is a couple who has been influenced by this false philosophy. And Prabhupada's taking the time to try and instruct them to understand what's wrong with it. As husband and wife, you must always remain together and raise your daughter in Krishna consciousness. I would like to go back to New Vrindavan and fix up a nice living place for yourselves and help to develop the New Vrindavan scheme. Our ISKCON should be taken as being a family based upon love and trust so as the father becomes unhappy when one of his children wishes to break family connections. I am also unhappy when there, is, when there are difficulties within our ISKCON family. So please do not consider leaving as you are spiritual children of mine. So now he's writing to one of the new GBCs in September 25th, and he says... I have just received one letter from so-and-so, one of the four sannyasi uh, revolutionists, and one from so-and-so, another sannyasi revolutionist. I have replied them in care of you, and you can forward their letters to their respective addresses. Books and magazines which they may require may not be restricted. I hope you understand the spirit of my letters addressed to them and try to bring them back to the service of Krishna. I am very pleased that you all GBC members are remaining vigilant so that the disturbance in, us, in our society may not continue. And in so-and-so and his wife's letters, those are the persons that we read about previously, there is reference to this fourth-class 
god brother of mine's name as if they were advised by so and so one of the four sannyasis and company to come to india and join his mat in other words take initiate take reinitiation from him it appears like that i shall be glad if you kindly inquire on this point it is not clear that my god brothers take objection to my being called as prabhupada and on this point they wanted to poison the whole society that is now clear but how it was manipulated that is a mystery please see that there is very strong program for placing our books and literatures in all the libraries and school colleges of your country that will be a great boon to the thoughtful men of your society okay now he's writing to another devotee who was very influential in in the early printing of his books he says please accept my blessings i understand you have left and it is a thunderbolt for me how is that what are your demands or have you also been contaminated please tell me frankly where is your wife and child if there is any disagreement with your god brothers you may live separately that doesn't matter if there is any severe misunderstanding i request you to come to india and live with me and start a press here i shall await your reply with great anxiety please let me know everything in detail by return mail that's the 7th of october so I see the poison is still being spread then on the 27th of october 1970 he writes to uh, one of those four sannyasis who revolted he said i beg to acknowledge receipt of your letter dated october 1st 1970 and have had and have noted the contents carefully in regards to why you have been branded as Mayavadi sannyasi by society members, that is because you are identifying the supreme, the spiritual master as God. We always represent ourselves as servant of God, and you are preaching contrary. The spiritual master should be given respect of God, but that doesn't mean he is God. That is Mayavad philosophy. You should always remember that the spiritual master is the representative of God and should be given the respect of God, but that doesn't mean that he is God himself. You can speak of the spiritual master as the servant God, whereas Krishna is the master God. I think this is sufficient to clear the idea. Regarding this fourth grade sannyasi, uh, God brother of mine, this is just a rumor because in the past there were such symptoms now you should forget about the past and go forward straight for preaching this Krishna consciousness movement. Before preaching of your spiritual master as God, you never consulted me whether it was right. This means you were inspired by some external influence. So-and-so said that it was a mystic influence. Why that, was, why that was, wasn't cleared up until now. That mystic influence ha was widely spread, which I clearly saw in Honolulu. Tokyo, or in other words, wherever so-and-so went to preach. Now we have to forget the past incidences and shall have to go forward with clear consciousness. Regarding punishment, there is no punishment upon you. Rather, there is reward. You have been awarded sannyas, so you have the best opportunity to serve Krishna by preaching his glories. Why punishment? Before taking sannyas, I told you that you may remain a brahmachari because management in LA was with you. Now you have voluntarily taken sannyasa. You may take advantage of this opportunity and preach this Krishna cult and expand missionary activities. Do it sincerely for my disciples. There is no punishment. There is only need, for, there is no need for that. One who preaches Krishna consciousness is supposed to be glorious. Directly write me and I will give you instructions how you can go on preaching. I hope this meets you in good health. Your ever well wisher A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. <clears throat> so we're almost finished now. It says, this is October 28th, 1970. Uh, he says, I have received your letter dated October 6th and have noted the contents carefully. So you see, Prabhupada was managing the whole movement through letters. Right? He's in India, but he's, he's getting letters. And it's not right away, of course, but he's answering them right away. Formally, I issued one circular letter requesting all GBC members who are zonal secretaries also to give me a fortnightly, in other words, every two weeks, report of the activities in his jurisdiction. But I am not receiving. I've received no letters since a very long time 
from so-and-so, and I'm very interested to know how things are going on in L.A. We have a great responsibility to pay $2,000 monthly to the church trustees. That's, they bought this church that we, have, that we still have today. It's our temple there. So he's concerned that the monthly payments, mortgage payments are made. In regards to my activities here, I am trying to open many centers here in India. I have sent the four sannyasis letters requesting them to preach from different centers. I'm glad that so-and-so has gone to Amsterdam. Similarly, the other three may go to other places. Why they are together. Sannyas means they should travel extensively, create new centers and new devotees. That is sannyasa business. Also, they can create life members. So that, that around that time, uh, or no, right before that, this one, one of those sannyasis came to Paris, and we treated him with great respect. I'll tell that story some other time. But uh, So he was sending them out to preach to different temples, the, away from the temples in America. And then he talks about how they're making life members in India. And he says, in regards to how that fourth class God brother of mine name came up, and so many other things. Forget all these past incidences. Let us now work with new life and new vigor that your confidence in one of those four sannyasis who revolted has been restored is nice. Actually, they are all nice boys, but Maya has made them something else. In the course of time, they'll all become nice again. Okay, and last letter. November the 1st, 1970. He's writing to a lady named Satyabhama Dasi. Regarding so-and-so, one of the four revolters, he has actually surrendered soul, but Maya is so strong that on account of association, he has even fallen down. So these two things are always side by side, Maya and Krishna. Krishna is service, and Maya is sense gratification. So every moment we are prone to be subjugated by either of them. Our duty is therefore to be very, very careful. The poison is personal ambition. Very important point is repeating this again. The poison is personal ambition. So everyone has the chance. Therefore, one should not be complacent. Doubts may come about, but one should be firmly fixed up that there cannot be any doubt on the spiritual master or Krishna. Hope this meets you well in good health. Your ever well wisher, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. So this gives you an idea of what problems Prabhupada had and he had to deal with them and he dealt with them on one hand very hard on the other hand very compassionately so he didn't throw the, those devotees out he, he, he raised them up to sannyas and then sent them out to preach to get them away from trying to take over the movement in the United States and then finally he found out that they had been contaminated by coming in contact with one of his god brothers in India who was jealous of Prabhupada. And even Prabhupada asked him to help him buy some land in Mayapur to open a temple. He refused. So he was definitely didn't want Prabhupada's movement to expand. He wanted to destroy it. Okay, so are there any questions? So you can see there is a difference between Maharaj Parikshit and Prabhupada. Uh, but Prabhupada got the same result. But through uh, what you would call very intelligent dealing with the situation and showing the mercy of Uttama Adhikari, but the uh, determination of a Kshatriya like uh, Maharaj Parikshit. Adibo. Okay, all glories to Sila Prabhupada Kijay.